Good morning and welcome to This Week. It's a two-man race. We did it again. Santorum sweeps the south. Can he take the fight to the convention? The time is now for conservatives to pull together. Mitt Romney regain his momentum. Senator Santorum is at the uh, desperate uh, end of his campaign. And how will Republicans reunite after this bruising contest? Questions this morning for our headliner, the man who continues to surprise, Rick Santorum. Then, the White House on offense. Mitt Romney, Rick Santorum, and Newt Gingrich. These guys have a fundamentally different economic philosophy than we do. And on defense, after a tragedy in Afghanistan. No one wants war. This is a hard slog. This is hard work. That and the rest of this week's politics with our powerhouse roundtable. George Will, Haley Barber, Bill Burton, Nia Malika Henderson, and David Ignatius. From ABC News, this week with George Stephanopoulos. It's your voice, your vote. Reporting from the Museum in Washington, Jonathan Carl. Good morning, everyone. George Stephanopoulos has a well-deserved morning off. It's been a wild week on the campaign trail with voters in Alabama and Mississippi giving Rick Santorum's campaign a lifeline. Yet in the all-important delegate race, Mitt Romney still holds a big lead. With 496 delegates, Romney has nearly twice as many as Santorum, and he's almost halfway to the magic number, 1144 needed to win the nomination. But our headliner this morning has been on a roll. Former Senator Rick Santorum joins us now. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Jonathan. Good to be with you. So, uh, Senator, front page of the New York Times today has a, a big headline saying Republicans are girding for a fight on the convention floor. You've been saying this for days, saying that basically nobody can really uh, get a majority of the delegates uh, be before the convention. Are you saying essentially that your best chance of winning this nomination is a fight on the convention floor? Well, we still believe that uh, there are plenty of delegates out there for us to, uh, to do what we've been doing, which is actually going out there and winning states and winning the tough battles and doing so over pretty overwhelming odds. Uh, if you consider the fact that we're, you know, have, uh, to deal with Congressman Gingrich, Speaker Gingrich, who's <clears throat> in this race and, and certainly pulling more votes from us than he is from Governor Romney and being outspent, uh, you know, here in Illinois uh, when I was just there yesterday and, uh, you know, by 10 to 1. Uh, yet we're hanging in there, we're fighting, we're climbing because we've got the best message, the, uh, the best contrast with, uh, with President Obama, and the best vision for our country. And I think that's what people are responding to. And they're, I think they're getting tired of the negative ads. They're getting tired of, of just tearing down the other side, which is what Romney has been doing now for two elections in a row, and really providing no real vision for the country. But how likely do you think it is that this is going to come to a battle on the convention floor? As you know, this is something that Romney has said would doom the party's chances uh, against uh, Barack Obama. Well, I don't think it dooms anybody's chances. Uh, look, this is, a, uh, this is a, a primary process where somebody had a huge advantage, huge money advantage, huge advantage of establishment support, and he hasn't been able to close the deal and even come close to closing the deal. That tells you that there's a real flaw there. And the fact that uh, we're able to do this uh, just by having, a, a, as, I, as I said before, a great message and, uh, and the American people, the Republicans and conservatives uh, lining up behind us, enthusiastically doing so, fighting the establishment, uh, you know, uh, clawing our way you know, into contention here, just tells you that people are looking for something different. They're looking for something that can you know go after President Obama and make the contrast? I, you know, as I was saying yesterday out on the road in Illinois. I mean, there's just there's increasingly the more I look at the record of Governor Romney and match it up against Barack Obama, I feel like I'm doing a training run for the general election. The same issues I'm out there campaigning on against Governor Romney are the same issues I'm going to campaign against Barack Obama on, which is you know the government overreach in healthcare and cap and trade, trying to control the uh, uh, the manufacturing energy sector of the uh, of the economy, and and of course you know the bailouts. All of these things are are you know unfortunately Governor Romney and and Barack Obama are in the same place. So. That's one of the reasons you're not seeing him close the deals, mandates. Are, are you saying that there's not much difference between Romney and Obama? On those issues, there clearly isn't. And as you know, Jonathan, those were the issues that, that really spurred our victory in 2010 was this idea of government mandates and control of the economy and, you know, the bailouts and the, and the attempt to try to take over, uh, you know, the, uh, the energy use in our country through cap and trade. And, and, of course, the successful takeover of the economy, Obamacare. 
Governor Romney's on the same page as Barack Obama on all of these issues. And that's what, again, you, you see uh, conservatives all across this country rejecting someone who they don't see a difference between this president. We can't be out there nominating someone who gives away the most important issues that conservatives care about in this election when it comes to the economy. You know, Gingrich has suggested, Newt Gingrich has suggested that he's actually helping you out here. Uh, that, that by staying in the race, he's making it harder for Romney uh, to get a majority of the delegates. Uh, I, I imagine you don't see it that way, but, uh, but if, if this, I, you believe this is a two-man race, is it time for a head-to-head -head debate, you against Mitt Romney? Oh, I'd love to have a head-to-head -head debate with Governor Romney. I, you know, I, I, the idea, for example, you know, he, uh, he pushes back and says Romney care is nothing like Obamacare, and he never advocated for it, which, of course, he did uh, in, in op-eds as well as on, on television programs and, and even in the 2008 election. What, when he got up and was questioned by Fred Thompson, the 2008 election, Governor Romney said, mandates, I love mandates. Mandates work. This is what we need to do. We need to force people to buy insurance. And, and he defended his record uh, and, in, in Massachusetts and, in fact, argued for exactly what President Obama put in place, which is a government-mandated health care program at the federal level. We, I'd love to be able to get one-on-one -on -one with Governor Romney and expose the record that would be the weakest record we could possibly put up against Barack Obama. And that's, again, why I believe ultimately, you know, we did very well yesterday in Missouri. I think we're going to do really, really well in Illinois, even though, you know, we're, again, you know, we're being uh, outspent. And, of course, Congressman Gingrich is on the ballot, and, and certainly the Speaker t is taking a lot more votes from us than he is from Governor Romney. But still, we're hanging in there because people are seeing, they're becoming around to the fact that we can't nominate such a weak candidate in the general election. Okay, well, I just heard from you a challenge for a head head-to-head debate against Mitt Romney, and I will, in turn, give you an invitation. We can do it right here on this week. Are I you accept. Uh, you know, I'd, 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 love, I'd love to do it. I, I see, if, uh, see if Governor Romney's willing to come out. He's been turning down every single debate. Uh, he's hiding behind the billionaires who are funding his super PAC and spending outrageous amounts of money, all running negative ads, tearing down the opponent on specious issues, not talking about the issues that people are talking about at their kitchen table. And in fact, a lot of the criticisms that he's leveling against me are things that he, he, he himself uh, has done, and in fact, far worse. Uh, like giving money to Planned Parenthood personally and, and, uh, and funding abortion clinics while he was governor of Massachusetts with taxpayer dollars. I mean, this is someone who, who will say anything to get elected. And I think, again, people are recognizing they want the genuine article. Okay, so now Puerto Rico primary today, you obviously spent <clears throat> some time down there, took some heat for suggesting that if Puerto Rico uh, were to become a, a, a state, they would need to have English as the official language. And, and I want to play something else you said. They have to speak English. Uh, that would be a requirement. It's a requirement that we put on other states uh, as a condition for entering the union. So w what did you mean by that? Because as far as I can tell, there is no requirement for, uh, for official English right now. There the were requirements. Yeah, there... Yeah, there were requirements put on other states when they came into the union that they that English be the, the principal language and that, that it be taught and spoken universally in those states. Uh, there are several states where, as you know, there were other languages spoken in the Southwest, Oklahoma, Hawaii, uh, and and so it was uh, it was a condition of uh, of admission to statehood. And that's that's simply what I've said is only 15 percent, according to the census, uh, are fluent in English in in Puerto Rico. And and what I've said is that obviously Puerto Rico is a Spanish speaking country and. Uh, it's, Spanish-speaking island, not a country, but Spanish-speaking island, and will continue to speak Spanish. And of course, that's their culture, and I have every right to do so. But what what I've said is that you know there should be fluency in English as well as as Spanish, and uh, if they want to. And I think that it's it just makes sense, just like here in this country. I mean, Governor Romney and I have both said that we would like English as the official language of this country. Yet when Governor Romney went to Puerto Rico. He, he said, oh, no, you don't have to speak English if you come into the, in, in, as, to be, as a requirement to be a state. Yet he wants English to be the official language of this country. This is the hypocrisy of Mitt Romney to go and pander for votes, knowing full well that there's, there's no way he would stand for that if, uh, as, as Puerto Rico coming in the, in, into uh, statehood without having proficiency in English. Yet to get 20 delegates, he's willing to say whatever he needs to say in order to get those votes. And I'm, I'm hopeful the people of Puerto Rico will see through the charade of what Governor Romney will do to get votes. All right, let, let's turn to foreign policy. Obviously, it's been a rough, rough week in Afghanistan. I mean, really a rough couple of months. You've heard Newt Gingrich suggest it's time to get out. What, what, what's your sense? Is it time to, to pull the plug on the war in Afghanistan? 
you know, this is a, it's a terrible tragedy that things have been occurring. And uh, obviously some of them are, are just simple that, just, just simple you know, tragedies of people uh, doing irrational things. Uh, but the, the bigger issue here is the policy of this administration. The policy of this administration uh, does something you simply can't do if you want to win a war, particularly against a guerrilla insurgent force, and that is give them hope that they can survive. And that's what the president has done from day one that he came into office, where he put a timeline for, the, for us to, uh, to leave Afghanistan. Once you give a timeline, you give the enemy a, an objective to hold on, to, uh, to, to bunker down, if you will, and, and survive whatever onslaught uh, the United States is going to put forth. And the other problem is you have all those actors in the regions, from Pakistan to the Afghans, uh, who are opposing the Taliban, who realize that the United States isn't going to be there to, uh, to finish the job so, and that they're going to have to deal with the Taliban afterwards. And so you've created a, an untenable situation. And, and so I, you know, I, in, in some respects, I agree with Congressman Gingrich that this is, if this is the game plan, if the game plan is we're leaving irrespective of, of whether we're going to succeed or not, then, then why, are we, why are we still there? Let's, let's either commit to winning or let's get out. Okay, so what, what does President Santorum do? Uh, do you commit to winning and, and what does that take? Or do you say it's time to get out? Well, I think if you commit to winning and you change, you change the entire dynamic in the region, you change the dynamic with, uh, with respect to the Taliban and you, you recognize that, that uh, we are going to stay there and we're going to finish the job. And by the way, that may not mean the heavy footprint that we have in Afghanistan right now. There may be, as we did when we, we initially threw the Taliban out, we did so with a, you know, with a few handfuls of troops, I mean, several hundred troops. It, 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 there's a lot of ways in which we can, we can play and be an effective actor uh, in that country. And, and certainly I would work with our our, uh, with our experts in that area to see what, what true pop complement we would need and, and work with the Afghan government to make sure that we commit to them to be successful uh, at whatever, uh, whatever that, is, uh, that means, whatever that's necessary to accomplish. Okay, I want to turn to the economy, give you a chance to respond to something we heard, a pretty extraordinary statement uh, from Mitt Romney about you and about your credentials on the economy. Take a listen. We're not going to be successful in replacing an economic lightweight if we nominate an economic lightweight. And I'm an economic heavyweight. I know how this economy works. I'm going to get it working for the American people because I care about the American people. Okay, so are you an economic lightweight? <laughs> well, when a, when a candidate has to tell you he cares about the American people, that tells you something, number one. Uh, if you, either dem you can either demonstrate that or you can try to convince them by telling them that. Uh, I think we, we, I don't go around and telling people I care about them. I show that I care about them, number one. Number two, uh, by the policies and by what I've done in my political career. Uh, number two, uh, if, if Mick Romney's an economic heavyweight, uh, we're in trouble because uh, he was 47th out of 50 in job creation in the state of Massachusetts when he was governor. Uh, he, may have, he may have had some success in making money for himself and his partners uh, at, uh, at Bain Capital, and I give him you know, a lot of credit for doing so. But that's a very different thing than going out and creating an atmosphere for people to create jo to, that create jobs. And again, for, for Mitt Romney to say he's the economic heavyweight, this is a man who doesn't understand uh, you know, conservative principles. Conservatives don't go out and say, I'm going to create jobs and I'm going to change the economy. I'm going to manage the economy. Just the opposite. What we believe in is getting government out of the way, creating opportunity and let the private sector do these things. This is, uh, this is Mitt Romney again, you know, the, uh, the, the CEO trying to go in and manage something. We don't need a manager. We need someone who can go in there and transform Washington and get it out of the, uh, out of the hair of people in, in the private sector, reduce regulation and cut taxes dramatically. We do. He doesn't. Uh, his program is, is, according even to the Wall Street Journal, is weak and timid. Ours is bold. Uh, they call it our plan. They uh, supply side economics for the working man because we talk about getting jobs for everybody in, mm -hmm. in our economy, getting manufacturing jobs back here, growing the energy sector. I was for growing the energy sector and, and, and for harvesting the resources in this ground. When Mitt Romney was putting caps on CO2 as a governor of Massachusetts right. and talking about cap and trade and, uh, and imposing all sorts of government regulations on the energy industry. Uh, your, your stance on pornography has also gotten a lot of attention this week. I want to read something. This is from your website. You say, America is suffering a pandemic of harm from pornography. It causes profound brain changes in both children and adults, resulting in widespread negative consequences. What, what did you mean by that? 
Well, uh, you know, we do something rather unusual in our campaign. When people write into our uh, campaign and ask for our opinions on issues, we actually respond to them and post them up on the website. And that's what happened here. And someone was asking about uh, the fact that President Obama and his attorney general don't enforce the existing pornography laws. And we wrote back and, and put it up our website saying that we would, of course, as president, enforce those laws because uh, obviously Congress, uh, in its wisdom, uh, understood that hardcore pornography is, uh, is very damaging, particularly to young people, and that exposure on the Internet uh, can be very damaging. And, of course, it's very damaging to a lot of folks. So, so what do you uh, do who, about uh, it, though? It, I mean, you, it's all sorts of study. Well, you... You enforce the law. There are laws against uh, against you know purveying hardcore pornography, and uh, that and and we have attorney generals in the country, at least under the Bush administration, uh. who did prosecute that. And this administration isn't. And I simply said I would follow the law, which I know in the case of Barack Obama can be somewhat of a hefty challenge for him. But we're going to do it as president. Okay, and uh, finally, I, I've got to ask you, uh, you. You've mentioned how liberal you say uh, Mitt Romney is. Uh, you, back in 1996, supported Arlen Specter uh, for president. Uh, this was a one-issue candidacy. He was a pro-choice uh, 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 candidate. Uh, take a listen to what he said when he announced his campaign for president. You were on the stage. I want to take abortion out of politics and leave moral issues such as abortion to the conscience of the individual. That is a matter to be decided by women not by big government. And, and, and take a look. I, I think we have a, a, a screen grab from that. You are there on the stage with him. You were, you were probably his most, yeah. maybe his most prominent supporter. Why did you support Arlen Specter for president? Well, uh, you know, when your colleague is running for office and, uh, you know, I was his colleague in the United States Senate, uh, he asked me to, uh, to stand with him. Uh, that certainly wasn't one of my prouder moments uh, I look back on. But look, uh, you know, you work together as a team for the, for the state of Pennsylvania. And, uh, you know, I felt, uh, I felt that, you know, that Senator Specter had stood up and, uh, and supported me. And, uh, and when I was uh, running in 1994, and, and I, did, uh, I did likewise, uh, I certainly knew that Arlen Specter was going nowhere and certainly disagreed with a lot of the things that he said. And uh, it, was, uh, it was something I, I look back on and wish I hadn't have done. Okay, all right, two, two quick ones. Uh, one, your, uh, your top aide, one of your top aides, John Braybender, raised the issue of Seamus the dog. Uh, of course, the, the dog that famously rode on the top of Mitt Romney's car. Uh, you think this is an issue for the campaign? By the way, I just want to add that, by, that when I was standing up behind Arlen Specter, uh, Mitt Romney was pro-choice. Mitt Romney was giving money to Planned Parenthood and was, was out there talking, being uh, as, are echoing the same themes, by the way, that Arlen Specter was, was echoing. So okay. if we want to compare uh, folks in, on, on issues, uh, Governor Romney was, uh, I was standing up, by the way, during that time fighting the Partial Birth Abortion Ban Act, which, by the way, Senator Specter supported. And one of the things that, uh, uh, that, uh, that to All me right. was a key was for his support. Uh, for that issue. As far as Seamus the dog, I, look, uh, all I would say is, uh, you know, the, uh, the issues of character are important in this election, and uh, we need to look at all those issues and, and make a determination as to whether that's the kind of person you want to be president of the United States. All right. Well, Seamus the dog, I think we'll be hearing more about him going forward. But, uh, but thank you, Senator Santorum. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Jonathan.